thank you. Uh, I'm going to uh, present this uh, course, uh, Population Dynamics and Economics. Uh, it's uh, in two parts. Uh, I teach this together with uh, Francesco Billari. He's, the, uh, he's doing the first part, I'm doing the second part. I start off with the, uh, the essential facts, and that is that there is a midterm exam that counts 50% towards the final exam. And then in the sec from the second part, we ask you to do an assignment that counts 50% as well. And this is supposed to be a research paper that uh, you will do and it counts towards the final. Okay, so I'm going to try to whet your appetite um, a little bit. And um, um, one of the, uh, the things that we know been a, a big problem lately is the financial crisis. Um, obviously, you all heard about that. But soon there is another crisis that's going to take place. And this crisis is called aging. And if you thought the financial crisis was bad, then aging is going to be a lot worse. In this course, we are going to talk about the kind of underlying processes which matters for aging. And what is it? Well, fertility rates, increased life expectancy happened across all developing con developed countries in the last, let's say, few decades. In the first part of this course, we're going to touch on basic demo the demography methods. We're going to look at uh, how to compute demographic rates, mortality rates, fertility rates, and so on. We're going to take a little uh, historical perspective. We're going to go back to the Industrial Revolution. We're going to think about how population processes were back then. And we're going to talk about what's called the demographic transition, where countries make a transition from having very high fertility to very low, high mortality to very low mortality. <clears throat> we are going to deal with a few techniques that you probably, or you might not have seen so far in your more standard economics uh, courses. We're going to look at what's called life tables and uh, period life tables. We're going to make interpretation of them. We're going to see how these increases in life expectancy is reflected in real data. And we will do also uh, a, a computer lab where we sit there with Stata and use real data to estimate these things. Okay, so here's the, the second part. So the first part is about learning the basic techniques that we need to know in order to do sound demographic analysis. And then we move on to, let's say, what I would say are current hot topics. We're going to talk about transition to adulthood. And you might ask what that's about. Um, so I'm Norwegian, and many of you are Italians. So for instance, the median age of leaving home in Norway is 20. In Italy, any idea? 30, 30 something, 31, 32. Now, why is that? Why is that? In Norway now, more than 60% of all children are born outside marriage. Why is that? And what are the consequences of that? We're going to talk about these issues quite a lot, second demographic transition, meaning that now we are having much more complicated demographic lives, so to speak. <clears throat> and does it matter? Does it matter that 
we are now so late performing certain demographic events. Does it really matter that you leave home when you are 30 rather than 20? So we're going to talk a lot about the economic well-being associated with these demographic events. And measurements matter. We're going to talk about happiness and related uh, measures of uh, well-being. So is it the case that when you have children, do you become happier? Well, it turns out if you have the first child, yes, it, you, you do. When you have the second, you don't. <laughs> Just flat. So it turns out, for instance, that in Scandinavian countries, parents are happier than non-parents. In other countries, I will not mention uh, uh, the, the names of these countries, but it turns out that those who are non-parents are happier than parents. And why is that? Why is that? Are well, we going to look into that? And of course, with happiness, maybe it's happy people who go on to have children rather than children be making us happy. So we're going to uh, talk about that in great detail. We're going to also introduce a new tool, which I'm pretty sure you haven't seen before, which is called agent-based modeling. We're going to spend some time trying to simulate societies, simulate processes. And we will t teach you how to do this using uh, simple uh, software techniques. <clears throat> We're going to talk about uh, economic development and fertility. Poverty and fertility in developing countries. Is it uh, because some countries are very poor that they end up having very high fertility rates? Or is it high fertility rates that make them poor? Very important from a policy perspective. And we will be uh, doing lectures, obviously, and uh, tutorials. But we will also use these computer labs. Uh, we will teach you how to. Uh, use ex these techniques with real data. Um, we will be dealing with some multi-levels or random effect models. It's all about STATA, uh, which I know uh, most of you uh, already are familiar with. Um, the course is not particularly technical. Uh, it helps if you have some good background knowledge in statistics or microeconometrics. Uh, in this sense, it's very complementary to, uh, to microeconometrics. Uh, but you will also survive if, um, if uh, you don't have such uh, very high technical skills. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, basically the presentation of, of the course. There, are, there is a textbook uh, for the first part. Uh, the second part, uh, there are no textbook. We will go through uh, papers. Uh, many of them uh, worked on uh, by myself and, and Francesco Billari and present you with a whole range of other papers that we think are of interest. And I think that is, uh, that is uh, all. Uh, any questions, uh, feel free to write me. I'm happy to answer any questions about the course. <laughs>